Welcome to this uh, series on uh, soldering electronics and my name is Kevin. I want to show you some of the tools that I use uh, for soldering and uh, I've been soldering since I was 12 so quite a few years and I taught myself how to solder but I can't say that I did everything right right and I've had some good mentors that have shared with me some things and I've also seen some good YouTube videos so I want to share with you what I learned. Uh, so let's start with some, some must-have tools and then also some nice-to-have tools. First of all, need a good soldering iron. Um, this one is what is known as an 898D+. It's actually a soldering station. You can't see the control unit, but it has a digital display. I can set the temperature and it heats up really, really fast. It has interchangeable tips. I like it because it's nice and comfortable. It's got a small grip uh, that works well in my hand. Uh, and, it, and it's great. Uh, I've really enjoyed having this professional base soldering station and I'll share details on it uh, down in the details section of this video so you can see. I bought it on Amazon. You can also find it on eBay. Uh, it's a generic brand but it has worked very well. The next thing is some good solder. I use solder from Radio Shack and Keister Solder. That's a brand name and this is Indian solder. I've also used stuff that I bought at Harbor Freight or at it, it stores that sell it. I've really f become a fan of this Indium solder. I learned about them through a makerspace that I'm involved with. Uh, Indium is a company that makes uh, professional solder used by those who populate circuit boards. Also, if you buy SparkFun solder, uh, they it is basically Indium uh, manufactured solder. Uh, there's two types of solder. There's a lead-free and a lead-based. Uh, the lead-free is is what everybody's using these days. Well, I shouldn't say everybody, but most uh, manufacturers are using lead-free solder. And I really uh, uh, struggle still to solder it. It takes a little bit more time and a slightly higher temperature to pull it off, uh, but you can do that, okay? If you buy leaded solder, a 6040 or a 63, I think it's 37, there's some different blends of that. They all work, um, they all work the same. I'm using a 0.032 diameter uh, solder. And uh, you can see it, it is quite small, but I really like it. So this is really good for soldering uh, circuit boards and electronics. Sometimes you need a little bit bigger piece to solder bigger tabs and things, uh, but this will still work. That's good. All right. The other thing I have is this nice little kind of wire tip cleaner, right? Um, so when I'm soldering, I can, uh, once I'm soldering, keep the tip clean by doing, by doing this, right? Just dab it in there. Sometimes you'll have a little sponge in here. I don't have a sponge yet for this, but a nice little sponge uh, that you can that usually come with these irons to kind of clean off the tip. Keeping, keeping the tip clean is probably the most important step. Right temperature, right solder, and keeping the tip clean. You can see my tip is nice and shiny. And I do that simply, I'll just take a little bit of solder, put on the tip, and do that to keep it clean and, uh, and ready to go. All right, the other piece of, of tool that I like is a little pair of uh, nibbers, right? Once you solder on a board, like if I, if I had this LED here, this is an LED, and I solder it in a circuit board, the, 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 the tabs, these wires are usually sticking out. I can nip them off on the back of it once it's soldered. So those come in really, really handy um, as well. This I consider a must-have tool. There's two ways to do this. One is with a little braid. That This is a solder sucker. It's a, uh, you, you can watch here, as I press this button, it just, you, you get spring-loaded, it clicks, and then you can get down on a circuit board and hit the button, it'll suck the solder right up. This is especially handy if you solder something in and you need to fix it. Okay, you can find these on um, eBay or Amazon. It's a solder sucker. I really like this. And then there's another solder braid to it. Looks like a little bit of copper braid that you can use also to, to soak up solder. But this really works well, especially cleaning out holes. All right. Okay, a couple of not need to haves, but I have just found these in my last year and started using them. This one's a little tip tinner. It, this one's lead free, so I can just you know roll my tip in it, and it, it it'll keep it clean. It's similar to doing the solder in this, but it puts a nice shine um, on the tip, and uh, it works pretty good. I like that. The other thing is this flux. 
Now the solder I use is usually a flux based solder or rosin core solder. Um, how it comes in handy uh, if you need it. It helps the solder flow. So for example, you can see it looks like a magic marker tip, right? And it's a little, got a little spring in it. So let's say I'm soldering these three holes right here. I can simply come and you may be able to see this, just tap it. And a little bit, it's kind of like liquid. It's alcohol based and it puts a little bit of flux on there and then when I solder that component it just kind of helps the solder flow. So I find this, have found this to come in a real handy in some soldering situations when I can't get the solder to flow properly. But most good uh, solder has some rosin in it that will help it flow but there is rosin free solder as well. Okay. Uh, oh, one last thing I want to show you. Masking tape. Let me show you why. Um, you can see right here, uh, if, if I need to solder something in, you put it here, but you got you put it here, but you got to flip it over to solder, right? And that thing falls out. So some components you can bend a lead on. I like to use a piece of tape. I can just put it over the, the, the thing I'm soldering, hold it in place. So when I, when I turn it over and actually solder the device, it doesn't fall down and uh, come up out of the board. So I find a little roll of masking tape or, or any kind of tape uh, very handy. All right, so that's my uh, tips for setting up a soldering station. Uh, I could add one last thing, right? This thing I'm on, let me show you. It's a breadboard. I bought it at Walmart. It's just a little wooden breadboard. Um, and I like it because I can put it on a work surface, I accidentally, you know, burn. I'm not gonna burn, ruin my table. If I set something down, hot pieces aren't going to work. If I spill something, it's just a nice little work surface so I can solder on a desk or other things and not risk damaging it. All right. See you on part two.